Hey everyone, Nariman here, welcome to my channel. Today we want to discuss ACP, which is short for Agent Communication Protocol. This protocol was introduced by IBM and it will allow agents to communicate with each other regardless of their underlying framework or technology. Basically the way it works is that it will kickstart an HTTP server and it will uh, put your agent behind it and then you can communicate with that agent by sending requests to that server and all these requests are using a standard protocol all the messages have a certain structure so you can rely on this standard uh, structure of the messages and communicate with all sort of agents that are using ACP so I would suggest let's dig deeper by implementing one and then I will explain to you more how it will work. For this project, I want to create two different agents using two different technologies to show you how they can communicate using ACP even though they are from different frameworks. So I decided to create one using Langchain and Langgraph. So I need Langchain Olama dependency and also Langgraph itself to create a React agent. And then the other would be implemented using Crew AI so I will also need that dependency. And then of course I'm going to use the ACP SDK to implement our ACP servers and then write our own clients for our agents to communicate with each other. First thing that you need to do before you start coding is that you need to go to the terminal and notice that I'm already in my project directory. And then you will install all these requirements using pip install dash r and then your requirements.txt file i will hit enter and it will install all the dependencies for me the other thing is that uh, make sure that you already installed olama and then you need to pull the model that you are going to use to create your agents based on that it's like Olama pull and I'm going to use Llama 3.2. So I'm going to say here Olama pull Llama 3.2 and then you will hit enter and it will start pulling that model for you. I already did that so I don't need to do it right now. It will also take some time for it to download the model. So yeah, that's it. That was our preparation before starting coding let's go back to the IDE to keep things simple I already created a project structure I will need three different files one is for my clients that I'm gonna call our servers and two for our two different agents let's start with the first agent to keep things simple I'm not implementing any sophisticated AI agents here. I want to focus more on how ACP is working. So I just have a very simple Langgraph React agent, which is using Olama's Llama 3.2 as its model. It doesn't have any tool. And the prompt is you are a cat, answer every questions with meow, do not use any other words. So that's our agent. But we want to see how we can put it behind an ACP server. To do so, you need to create your own ACP server. So in the server package of ACP SDK, there is a server class, you will initialize it, and then you will run it on your preferred port. By default, I guess it's 8000, but since we are running two different servers today, I'm gonna run one on 8001 port and the other one on 8002 port. So I specified my port exactly here and then comes the most important part. So as input, you have a standard ACP message as output. You have a standard ACP message again in between. You need to convert it back to what your agent would understand. Call your agent with the user's query, get the output and then convert it back to ACP messages. What you need to do for this is you need to decorate your method using server.agent and this is my agent. It's an async method. It will take a list of messages as input and you can see this is the standard ACP message 
and it will yield an ASIC generator as output. So first of all, we need to create a query out of these messages. I'm going to just join them with white space. There is a list of messages coming. I'm going to say for M in messages and then is each message has its own part also. So for part in M dot parts and each part has its own content. So I'm going to say take the content. So what I'm going to do is go through each message part, get the content, concatenate all of them with a white space, and then I will have my query. Then I need to invoke my agent with the user's query, which with Langgraph is like this. You will call invoke and then there will be a dictionary of messages. Yeah, something like that. You will have an object of messages which has a list and then the role is the user. The one that is asking the question is the user. And then the query is the content that we are going to try to pass it to the agent. This of course will give us a response. So this is the response from the LLM agent. So as I told you, when we got the response, we need to convert it back to standard messages. Here, since it's a async method, I'm going to do yield instead of return. And then I'm going to create a message. It's like creating a normal object. It consists of parts, as we saw here above when we were creating the query. And parts is a list. And then you have the message part, I guess. Let me see, it should be here, yes. And then in the message part, you will have the content. Again, we saw this here, that each part has its own content. And usually uh, when you invoke Langgraph React agents, you are interested in the last message. So it will give you a list. You need to get the last one. So what I'm going to do is go to response, take the messages, take the last one with minus one index and then take the content. So that's it. We created our first ACP server. We put our agent behind a very simple ACP server and it's communicating using these standard messages. Even right now, I can go ahead and just run it. And you can see that it will start on localhost and port 8001. You can run a curl command. You can send a request using Postman and already communicate with this HTTP server. But if you are using it inside code, you can write your own client which is exactly what we are going to do a little bit later. So this was our Langchain agent. Now we can go and create our own Crew AI agent as well. Let's go to this one. Yeah, this one is also pretty simple. The agent is called a dog. You answer every questions with woof. And it's not going to use any other words. So very simple agent that we have right here. But the difference is it is using crew AI agent class. So it's completely different technology. We again created a server. We are running it on 8002. And now we need to again implement the same method which is decorated with server.agent. So the first part would be the same. I'm just going to go ahead and copy it from here. We are making the query, but co by concatenating all of these messages. But invoking crew AI agent is a bit different. You need to first create a task. You can say task, and I guess it's inside the same package as the other ones. Yeah. 
So this will be my task. The description would be the user's query. And there is also an expected output. It's just going to say just answer the query or something. Yeah. A response to user's query is the expected output. And then you will define your agent that you are going to use, which is our dog agent. So let me just break it down like this so you can see better. So I created my own task. Then I need to create my crew to pass all of this information to it. So as you can see, it's a little bit more complicated to run an agent using crew AI. So this crew will take all the agents that is needed, which will be the doc and the tasks that are needed, which will be the task. This should, I guess, also be a list, yeah. And this will be my crew. And finally, you can kick start the queue by calling kickoff. And this will run the task with the agents. But then at last, we need to yield the message, yeah. This is also more or less the same. I'm going to take this. But there is a difference here. We don't have any response. And you cannot get the output also from the uh, crew. You need to get it from the task. So task has an output. And I guess there is also a raw output method that will give you just the string as you want it. And we need to also import message part. And I guess, yeah, that's it. So what we did was more or less the same. Converting back the query, call our agent, converting back again to standard messages. And you can also go ahead and run this. You can see that it's now running on localhost 8002. So what do we need is now to communicate with these servers. So we need a client. The client is also provided to us by ACP SDK. You just need a somehow async main and then you will run it with async IO, which also reminded me if you are using async IO, we need to Put it in requirements.txt as well. I will put it here so when you are running the project, you are also installing this dependency. Let's go back. So we are gonna see what we have in ACP SDK for clients. You can see there is a client that I can import, and then I'm gonna say async width and then I will define my own client. Then I will need the base URL, which is like HTTP localhost. And the cat was 8001. And then I will call this cat or cat client or whatever. Then I'm going to call this client with run a, uh, maybe async, yeah. You need to specify your agent and it's usually the method name. Here you can see it was called cat agent. So I'm gonna call it cat agent. And I'm gonna say to my agent, hello, how are you, for example. And it will give me a result and then I can print it for you. But it's like a chain of calls until you reach the actual output. It has an output. Yeah, exactly. Output zero, part zero, and then content. So this one is giving me... Ah, yeah, of course. Uh, this is async, so I need to await on this. 
maybe this can be run sync for now as well for our showcase i think it would be better so the most important thing is that before running your client you need to make sure that uh, your server is up and running so i'm gonna go ahead run this one and then i'm gonna go back to the client i'm gonna run the client and here we go you can see that everything is working as expected and then we can see how they are communicating even with each other for example i can chain them i can create another one which is like doc client and if you remember it was running on 8002 So let's say I'm going to run the dog client with the output of the cat client. I'm going to chain them. Instead of this input, I'm going to send them the output of the cat client. So I'm going to say, hello, how are you? The cat client is going to say meow. I'm going to say the meow to the dog client. And hopefully we will get the woof as the output. So let me also again print the result. I can't even to avoid confusion. I can do like this, cat result, cat result. Here also cat result, but here it will be dog result. So what we need to do is also run the dog server cat server is already running and then we need to run our client here it should be also the name of the agent should be dog agent let's run it yeah you can see at first we got the meow and then we sent the meow to the dog agent and we got the wolf back so you can see that our agents are communicating over some standard protocol Regardless of their technology, regardless of it can be even programming language, regardless of what framework they are using, what tools they are using, and it is very powerful. You can even orchestrate them. And yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please like it, share it with your friends, and also subscribe me for more content like this. See you around.